and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have some returning good brothers to the temple, part of the multi-headed monster that is 23rd Century Productions, creators of... Battle Lords of the 23rd Century, which is now making its realm, its realm into the Savage World system. So, Savage Battle Lords, if you will. In one corner, we have Anthony Oliveira. In in one cor in another corner, we've got big we've got Big Dave, Dave David Sirocco. And in the third corner, we've got we've got Kurt Willis. Apologies if mis if I mispronounced any names. It's been a while. <laughs> How are you guys doing well, tonight? Doing well. Doing good. Yep. Oh. There's a small part of me that's curious what CDO is meant to is meant <laughs> to stand for, Dave. It's OCD, but in the correct alphabetical order. That's that's Dave's superpower. Um, that's what actually was one of the things that makes him a real asset to the company is is his uh, uh, attention to detail uh, on an obsessive compulsive level. And he's so obsessive compulsive he likes to joke that OCD should be CDO because that way it's alphabetical. Is that like the dyslexic atheist who doesn't believe in dog? Yes. Yes, very much. <laughs> Which is great for editing. This thing is two pixels to the left. Straighten it up. He's not kidding, by the way. <laughs> yeah. No, I can I can believe it. As long as he as long as he doesn't go at the full level of anal analness that um the director of Heaven's Gate did, I think we're good. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Yes. We'll see. I don't see I don't see um I don't see him um cracking the whip at the office for twelve hours just to get the right photo. No, no, that's that's nope. sort of my job though. I, I'm, job. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm the whip cracker. I keep everybody moving. Dave just just edits things uh, obsessively. So mm -hmm. yeah, we we each have our area of specialization. Well, and it works I, well. It does work well. It does work very well. I seem to recall Lucas um, in his early, in his early days fancying himself more as an editor than a director, and only went into directing because he got pre because he got peer pressured by his colleagues. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. I, you know, I, I've always thought of Lucas more as a, of an idea guy than, uh, than than a director. As somebody who's gone through snippets of the original um, co of the original concept when it was the Star Wars, you're not far off because the original the original pitch was completely incomprehensible. However. I, now I've co I've covered kind of the origin story and the like when it comes to the tumultuous history, tumultuous and ups and downs and middles when it comes to um, battle lords. So I'd like I'd like to skim a little bit into that and open up with your gu your guys's first experience with the Savage World system. Um, that that would be me. Um, I actually. Um, been aware of Savage Worlds for a long time. I mean, the system's been around for for ages, mm -hmm. um, and got back into it when we decided that we wanted to expand the Battle Wars universe into a system um, that might be a little more streamlined, uh, a little more lightweight to a, to appeal to that gamer base. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we knew pretty early on we didn't want to go with with Dungeons and Dragons uh, 5e. Thank God so, for that. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I outright said, I am I am thankful to whatever, whatever God is watching that you guys didn't go down that route because yeah. that would have caused a lot of headaches and you guys have enough headaches to deal with as it is. Uh, although I have had one of the writers for, two actually, writers for Pathfinder go, you know, this would make really good Starfinder material. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we're not, we're not going there. Um, <laughs> so I, I suggested... Um, Savage Worlds. Uh, it's a, it was a system that um, where where Pinnacle encouraged people to put out their own settings for it. The, you know they had support for that. People are used to that. 
um, and uh, the, the rest is history, as it were. Mm-hmm. And, well, you chose a good time to do it, because if you had done this a little bit earlier, you would have had to be in the same position that um, that Knight Errant was, where just as just as they were putting out their Savage World stuff, Swade comes out, and they had to and they had to scramble. Well, I, I always hear they're getting ready to release a new edition, and I know that, that the old edition is essentially they need to do another print run. So I'm I'm sort of waiting for that shoe to drop. Hopefully, it's not. Um, but you know, they they uh, I, there's probably one due. <laughs> if there's a, I think it's going to be quite a while because Swade came out like two years ago yeah so don't, I wouldn't expect it anytime soon and for and to the and to pinnacles credit they're pr- they're pretty um, open with putting conversion guides out between editions and because of the fact that it's usually a bunch of little things that change in the grand scheme of things it's not like say an edition sh- an edition change with um with something like Dungeons and Dragons or something like Shadowrun, where there's a bunch of parts that get moved about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but were th- were there were there other besides those besides the big one? Were there other um s- were there other systems that were considered? Um, we looked at a few, but they're really um. I mean, I don't think there were very many options that fit our needs um, out, outside of those two. And, and like I said, we ruled one of them out really early on. Um, so it was it was sort of a no-brainer for us. Uh, we did bring up GURPS, but Tony said never, <laughs> never, uh, no, never again yeah, speak that I, word. I vetoed that one. Uh, it's like you're, you're, trying to aim for, you're trying to aim for a simpler alternative for the for the base system and somebody had had the audacity to pitch gurps no it was more of a joke but it did bring this the laugh and they're like no i keep picking on i keep picking on gurps fans because they keep telling me that it's the only rpg that i need which by the way if any gurps fan is listening one all's fair in love and riffing and two you're still wrong yeah, our art director is actually a GURPS fan, and he loves it because of some of the really obscure source books they've released um, over the years. Like, he's still trying to get me to play um, GURPS using the uh, Prisoner source book from the old 1970s BBC TV show, The Prisoner with Patrick McGowan. Be seeing you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hold on one moment. Um, although some, although I have an easy way to make, to make some GURPS fans cr- cringe by saying, why would I play the only game that got rate that got rated by the secret service? Yeah, I, I've actually talked to Steve Jackson about <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, and he's, a, he's a super nice guy. We just didn't think it would be a real good fit. No, especially especially since it's the complete opposite of what you guys are what you guys were going for it sounded like you wanted a simpler alternative and yes while the actual play part of gurps is relatively simple because of its bell curve um the player facing part of it not so much um even if even if you were to do a Using the system, but go, but not using the not using the full GURPS um, sandbox. There's a whole, there's way too many moving parts. Um, I had I had racked the back of my head as far as what else could have been used. The only other one that came to mind was Fate, and I think Fate's a little bit too far in the opposite end. Yeah, um, I that was really more of a preference. Um, mm-hmm. I love the Dresden Files books. I love the Dresden Files role playing game but I'm not a big fan of the face system. Um, and it would have required, uh, honestly, a lot more hammering and tinkering to get it to fit. And that was why we ruled that one out. And getting it to fit is used very loosely. Yes. Very. Scra- um, square peg, round hole. I got it. Square peg, triangular hole. Which... 
The only way you the only way you get get that thing to get in there is if you are if you are very smart or very strong. Yeah, we we had en enough challenges whittling down um, battle wars uh, for uh, for the Savage World system. I would I would not have wanted to tackle. Yeah, with fate. So, um, <laughs> the big problem with the big problem with why fate would be would be um, incompatible is so much of battle lords would ju would just be relegated to either skills or stunts. Yep. Which, for some things you could do, for other things you couldn't. Especially some of the some some of the um, grittier stuff. It just would it just wouldn't be compatible unless you did a whole did a whole lot of coming up with things out of whole cloth and. I've made it clear in the past that I'm not a fan of the just house rule it attitude that some that some people have. Hmm. House ruling should be a spice. And fortunately, Savage Worlds handles gritty just fine. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that was that was the easy part, actually. <laughs> yeah. As an aside, one thing I one thing I'd like to get out of my system is with the um, quick start rules that you that you guys sent me. Mm -hmm. I am very thankful for the fact that it is properly bookmarked. Okay. That's good. I've had a few instances where where I'll get like a 60-page PDF that's not bookmarked or doesn't have any sort of naviga navigational quality of life feature. Yeah, that's that's kind of Dave's, you know, department on that OCD type thing. He likes to make sure that it's easy to find and, you know, that um, everything flows really well. Mm -hmm. We have ways of doing things and we will do things the way we do things correctly. <laughs> now, I think I think for a lot I think for a lot of people this w this will be their first introduction to Battle Lords in that whole Every game is someone's first attitude. So, I'm guessing you guys have been have been going through a bit of length to make sure that the um, bullet points about the about the Battle Lords universe and what separates it from other science fiction universes is going to be hit. Yeah, our our tagline for for the product was was bringing futuristic armored infantry combat to savage worlds mm -hmm. um and that really describes it both from a rule and a setting standpoint but uh, yeah getting getting information about the setting out there uh is important because that's what's going to draw everybody in and you know that what i always use is is uh, if you want to know what it's like to play uh under-trained over-equipped expendable corporate mercenaries fighting in a, a horde of techno-organic monsters in a galaxy at war, that's Battle Wars. Mm -hmm. Now, with that, in, with that in mind, I did, I did, I of course did see some, did see some familiar aspects. The two, the um, two column setup, which I think, which I'm guessing is still going to be maintained in the full book. Yes. Now, Something uh, something I'm a bit curious about is, early, is early on I noticed that you're in, that you're introducing a D20 into the mix, which is <laughs> quite a bold statement since yeah. it's the one die that Savage Worlds likes to avoid. Yeah, it's and it's only used in one spot, and that's a holdover from Battle Lords, where it's only used in one spot. Um, and we we I'm debating to the, still debating whether or not to change that to. Um, 2d10, uh, you know, you know, odds or evens. And if your, your evens roll on the top die 10, and if your odds roll on the bottom die 10, um, you know, it's going to accomplish the same results, but it, it may keep people from having to worry about, I didn't bring a die 20. We don't use those in savage worlds. Mm -hmm. That's, an, that's an understandable thing. And given the, given that. What were some, what were some of the easier things to transfer over, and what were some of the harder things? Or, more specifically, what are some of the um, what are some of the things that you had to that you had to introduce whole cloth and couldn't just integrate into what's already present? 
Um, the hardest thing is the armor system, and the, the, the way armor and weapons interact in Battle Lords is really what I think makes the game unique, so it's mm -hmm. something we wanted to preserve. But in traditional Battle Lords or classic Battle Lords, um, armor is essentially ablative. You wear it down mm -hmm. over time. And Savage Worlds has no mechanic for that. It's an anathema to their fast and furious sort of mindset. I mean, really, the only thing they have like that are wounds. And for wounds, you're typically not counting to more than three. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, that was the hardest to implement. Um, and it comes up a couple other places where we had to find a workaround for that, that the ablative nature of, of whatever it was. And so that it's, it's getting worn down over time. Um, so that I think that was probably the hardest because that is something that the Savage World system does not deal with really at all um, beyond wounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that's the other thing. It um, it it is very sim it is very simple when it comes to its when it comes to its wound and um, stress approach. Usually, usually with just a few levels before you're incapacitated, which. Works for that Fast and Furious design, sir, um, no doubt. But given how, given how that's not exactly how you have armor and how you have health work, I could see that being an issue. The other thing I'm cur I'm curious about is, speaking of that, Battle Lords had a lo had location based um, condition, mm -hmm. and. Obviously, something like Savage Worlds doesn't really have that. So, how do you balance between those two ends? Um, really, the only time that comes up is if you're um, if you get an, a, a, a wound that requires you to roll on the injury table, mm -hmm. and we have ported the the fan favorite Battle Lords critical hit table over to Savage Battle Lords, and it's essentially become an expanded injury table. And basically what we said was, if you know where the shot hit, if somebody made a called shot, mm -hmm. just roll for that section. Otherwise, just roll for the whole chart and it'll tell you, oh, they got you in the arm, they got you in the leg, they got you in the head, um, you know, whatever it is. Um, so you still sort of get that and it, it actually worked into the system really easily. Um, you know, it doesn't, it's not going to um, affect you any more than, in the, than, result on the, the classic, uh, the original Savage Worlds injury table would, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to be, um, you know, in Battle Wars, it'd be like, oh, you hit, you got hit in the left arm, you can't use your left arm anymore. Well, Savage Worlds doesn't do that. So that part is not going to be in Savage Battle Wars. It'll be like, well, you take a negative one penalty to your agility now. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the way the, those wounds affect people is still classic Savage Worlds. Um, but you're with Savage Battle Wars, you're going to know, oh, I got you know, my femur is shattered, or oh, I just got concussed. Mm -hmm. Now, take now within that the I'd say the other big thing that is especially crucial with tr with um transferring o with transferring over into Savage Battle Lords is going to be the weapons because everybody everybody loves the toys. Mm -hmm. And there's a insane amount of customizability for dif for different weapons, different weapon types, and different tech levels of weaponry. And I'm curious how you guys would hand are going to handle that. Yeah, that was probably one of the tough parts. Um, Battle Lords is very granular, mm -hmm. and um, Dave and I were talking about this. The, the you know the problem with battle with with Savage Worlds is you you know you get three ranges, short, medium, long. You get one damage value, an armor piercing value, a number of shots, and maybe some notes, like the weapon has reach or something. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Um, so a lot of the weapons in Battle Lords, when you port them over to Savage Worlds, a lot of them are close enough where they become essentially identical because <laughs> you lose that level of granularity. Um, so... There, there probably won't be as wide a variety of weapons, but we still have all of the weapon systems that Battle Wars is known for um, in the game. And the way we handle that interaction that, that we're known for between weapons and armor 
is for certain weapon systems, if you get a raise on your attack roll, if you've shot them really well, um, it triggers an additional effect for certain weapons, um, which, it, which mirrors the effect they would have on armor in classic battle lords. So if you get an attack roll and raise with a laser, um, it ignores the toughness bonus uh, or the, the, uh, the wounds on the armor. If you get an attack roll raise with an omega weapon, it knocks them back two to die six meters and they're knocked prone. Um, so you can trigger these um, special effects that mirror the unique capabilities of each weapon system from classic battle lords. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that's sort of how we dealt with that uh, when we ported it over. I think it, it works pretty well. Now, when I looked into the whole intro to the rules thing, there were there were a few things that I um I was a bit I was a bit curious about and how you'd handle. One is the rank thing since Battle Lords is full on free form. I am here. Don't! Don't! Don't. Oh, Mildred's muted. I don't know what happened there. Did you get... Yeah, StreamYard muted me for a second. What, um... I, oh. I heard about the first three words, and then you disappeared. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened there. Um, I was... Say, I was going... I was going over the dif- the difference between the rank-based kind of advancement that Savage Worlds has as opposed to the more the more um the more freeform design that's in uh Battle Lords and how do you strike a middle ground between those um that was something in terms of uh experience rank advancement rank in Savage Worlds that was something that we didn't really feel the need to 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 mess with to tweak it works fine um, so you can still, you, uh, that's still there, novice, seasoned, all the way up to veteran. Um, the only changes we've made are sort of uh, spit and polish, putting gloss on it in terms of, um, you know, now the highest experience rank is called Battle Lords, but that really doesn't affect gameplay or game mechanics at all. Now you can still get a military rank in Battle Lords, um, and there are edges that you can purchase to give you a higher rank, which gives you perks like you get paid more and you're in charge. Mm -hmm. And the game master can award people military rank um, as a reward, um, giving them those edges. Um, But really the the experience, the advancement rank that that Savage Worlds is known for is is identical in Savage Battle Wars. We didn't really tweak that. Yeah. Now, when it comes to size... A lot of games gloss over um, size because most player characters are going to be medium sized. That's not really the case with Battle Lords, and I'm curious what you guys are, what you guys are planning to make it so that size still plays a factor, if at all. Um, all of the 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 existing size rules uh, for Savage Worlds were tweaked just a little. I mean, we still pretty much use them um, as is. Um, Ram Pythons and Scissor are going to be size two. Um, Chitalians and Muzakins are going to be negative one in size. Mm -hmm. So all the normal size rules apply. Um, The only thing we tweaked because it it sort of mirrored the Battle Lord setting was that size also affects your pace, which is ironically how they used to do it in Savage Worlds. They don't do it now with it. They've got swayed. Um, But we sort of reinstituted that rule. Um, so a Ram Python is going to run faster than a Musakin just because they're bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other the other rule that's uh, ported over from Classic Battle Wars is that your size also affects how much you pay for armor. Um, the bigger you are, the more you're going to pay for your suit of armor. Mm-hmm. And conversely, the smaller you are, the cheaper it is. Which um, hits a bit home as as a as a big guy who's got to go to DXL in order to find something that fits. <laughs> tall guy problems but something something that i think i think a fair few people who are who are leaning more in the savage worlds camp than the battle lords camp 
um, might have an adjustment period to is how you're handling aggression and how you're handling berserk. So I'd like to cover that. I'd like to cover that. What gave what gave you guys the um, reasoning to in, to introduce the introduce combat stress into Savage Battle Lords? I think that's one of the things that's that's unique to Battle Lords. I mean, it's military science fiction. Um, characters panic. They freeze in combat. Um, they get um, you know worked up into a into a combat frenzy. I mean, we have an aggression stat in classic Battle Lords. It's 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 core to that that system that setting. And so it was one of the things that we wanted to port over. So much like Savage Worlds has the fear table, um, we have a combat stress table. And um, certain species are more prone to be aggressive and they get bonuses when they're rolling on that stress table. So they may go berserk or um, uh, suicidally berserk. Uh, or Conversely, uh, other species may panic, freeze, freeze up, um, flee. And uh, basically what we, uh, how we decided to trigger that was if, you know, if you have to make a spirit roll in Savage Worlds, which basically goes to, you know, sort of your, your willpower and your mental fortitude, and you flub it, <laughs> you've got to roll on it, and you're in, in combat, you've got to roll on that combat stress table. Um, so if you're rolling ones, um, you've got to roll on that. And if you're something like a Fintari, who is naturally aggressive, or, or a Ram Python, um, odds are you may go a little nuts and go into a battle frenzy and your friends aren't going to want to be anywhere near you when you do that. Um, but neither are the bad guys. Mm -hmm. Now, of course the, other, of course the other thing that was a big, that was a big deal was every species having a bit of a, a bit of a spread regarding resi regarding environmental resistance. Yeah. And how, and I think it's, I think it's important to note how you guys plan on, Carrying that kind of thing over to Savage Worlds, which again isn't going to be as granular about those kind of environments. Yeah, in in Battle Lords, there are certain species that are resistant, or in some cases, immune to environmental conditions. And fortunately, Savage Worlds has existing rules for weaknesses and resistances and immunities. Um, what people, what's unique to Savage Battle Lords, and people may not have seen very often, is your player character, depending on which your wild card, depending on which species they pick, may have an environmental resistance or a weakness right off the bat. Um, in addition, the suits of armor they buy may be resistant to certain environmental conditions. Um, and the the feedback we got in playback or in uh, play testing was, well, in Savage Battle War, or in I'm sorry, in, in Savage Worlds, environmental resistance doesn't come up that often. But in Battle Lords and Savage Battle Lords, it comes up a lot. We have flamethrowers, we have freeze grenades, um, you know, we have um, sensory overload grenades, we have mental attacks, um, we have all kinds of weapons that would trigger uh, an environmental resistance or weakness if that character or armor suit uh, possessed it. So basically, we've taken that um, that framework that already exists in Savage Worlds for um, environment for environmental resistance uh and ported it over to uh, to savage battle lords to cover that and, and again that's one of the unique things about um the setting if you're playing a fintari and you're an eridani and somebody hits you with a frost gun or a freeze grenade you're just going to walk through it like it's a spring rain um if you're playing a mutsakin and somebody hits you with a thunderbolt generator which is like a uh, a lightning gun, or you're on a high radiation planet, you know, you're going to be out there like you're getting the suntan. It's not going to phase you. Um, so people will have to pick and choose their weapon systems uh, and armor to compensate for their wild cards, species, weaknesses, and resistances. That certainly makes sense. And I do appreciate that it's that it's in a bit of a tier like approach here, as a, which I'd say is going to be an easier fit. Now, I suppose this is as good a time as any to talk about to talk about um, the things that go boom. Because you guys put in a few changes regarding missiles, and 
I'm curious what I'm curious what part of the standard missile rules you felt didn't work for um, battle lords and why? <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> um, um, Savage Worlds, at least my impression of it, is very much the the missile rules are designed to sort of uh, replicate you know sort of your your 1980s i've got a stinger missile on my shoulder i've got to wait till i get a target lock and then i'm going to fire that missile um that's not how missiles work in battle wars um you know, a lot of times you're firing multiple missiles simultaneously sometimes at the same target sometimes at different targets um sometimes they fly themselves sometimes you're point shooting them um and you're doing the aiming um so uh most of it was getting around that, um, you know, you got to wait for it to lock on. You got to, um, you know, you can only shoot one at a time. Uh, you know, what happens if I'm shooting, you know, three, four, five, 12 missiles? Uh, how do I deal with that? Uh, and, and so we had to tweak the missile rules a little. Uh, and essentially what we did was we steered them from being a unique weapon to basically working like a lot of the regular weapons in um savage worlds they've got a queue you they've got a rate of fire you can fire you know certain number per round what's that do to your queue your your, your number of shots um rather um so they they uh, they've become more viable as a primary weapon system and that that was sort of our goal Sorry, I didn't. Sorry, my my mic decided to be, to be uncooperative. Um, we 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 hinted at it earlier, but I think it's time to delve a little bit further into the injury table and how similar or different it's going to be from from the from the battle lords that some people might be used to. I mean, it's up. I mean, um, obviously the obviously they we couldn't um transfer the whole thing whole cloth, but we got to have it in some form because. Well, when shooting this, when the shooting starts, things get ugly. Yeah, the the injury table. If you're a, bat, a classic Battle Wars player and you're looking at the injury table, um, it's essentially unchanged in terms of the types of injury you can get mm -hmm. uh, or injuries. It's designed to replicate um, war wounds, for lack of a better term, um, battlefield injuries. Uh, you know, ribs shattered, stomach punctured, heart struck, spinal cord struck, lung punctured. Um, those are all in there. And if you're running Savage Worlds with the gritty rules, which we suggest, or Savage Battle Wars with the gritty rules, and you have to roll on that table every time you take a wound, um, your character is going to get torn up. Um, you know, the good news is that um, with body rehabilitation injections, we can get you back on your feet um, pretty darn quick. But um, the, the injury table, uh, is gritty and, um, you know, somewhat realistic in terms of the types of wounds you would encounter in, in, in a battlefield situation. What they would not recognize are the effects, um, that it has on their character, because obviously that's geared for savage worlds, mm -hmm. um, and not battle lords. So you're going to have, um, uh, you know, it, um, Agility reductions are very common, particularly if you've, you've gotten a bone that's broken. Um, um, head hits can render you incapacitated. Um, you know, sometimes you get hit in the hand, you pick up the, uh, uh, you'll pick up like a fumble fingered hindrance until uh, that's repaired. Um, or if you get hit in the legs, uh, you'll pick up a clumsy hindrance until that's um, repaired. But uh, that's what would, would be new to them is that um, the end result of receiving those critical hits on the expanded injury table are going to result in uh, attribute penalties or temporary hindrances. Yeah. And I noticed when, it, when it looking through things like the hindrance list, um, a reference to the Carnage Companion, which I don't... Which, um, I don't recall see the closest I remember seeing when I when I looked that up was Escape from Carnage Island, which I don't think is the same thing. <laughs> yeah, we've got um, essentially three Savage Battle Lords books 
done. Um, there's the core rules. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the Carnage Companion, which uh, is sort of like a player's handbook. It expands on the armor and weapons. Uh, it provides more hindrances and edges. Um, also introduces things like uh, vehicles. And uh, we decided, you know, we didn't, because a lot of people like to keep Savage Worlds streamlined, we didn't want to dump that all in the core rules. Mm -hmm. But if you want to expand your game and you want more hindrances and edges and you want ve vehicles, um, pick up the Carnage Companion and it has all that information in there. Um, and then the last book we have ready to go is the tentatively titled Alliance Setting Guide, um, which expands more on the Battle Orge universe. Uh, gives a lot more information about the setting, uh, gives information about uh, the hostile alien life forms you're likely to, likely to encounter, including the Arachnids and their minions and the Atlanteans, um, and also introduces all of our spacecraft. So if you decided you'd like to run a campaign where you're spacefarers, we've got the spacecraft in the, uh, the setting guide. Mm -hmm. So there are three Savage Battle Wars books that will be ready to go um, when we launch that Kickstarter, um, yeah. and, and by ready to go, I mean, they're pretty much written, laid out. We're just putting the final tweaks on them. So people are not going to have to wait years to see these books, uh, mm -hmm. if the Kickstarter is successful. Um, one thing I did note when I looked at the entry for armored suits is that unless I'm mistaken, there is still that layered, um, mitigation of damage. First through, first through armor, and then through, and then toughness bonus and absorption. Oh. Is that is that going to be working relatively similar? Is um toughness bonus and absorption going to be working relatively similar to how it worked in Battle Lords, or are there going to be some tweaks to keep an eye out for? Um, it will be much different than Battle Lords because Battle Lords uses an ablative system, and that was just not something that we could port over to Savage Battle Lords. So essentially. Um, your armor, uh, in, in classic battlers, I should say, armor's got three components. You've got the hard outer shell, um, you've got the padding underneath, um, and the padding can also react to temperature changes. Um, and then you've got the amount of uh, material in the armor before it falls apart. Um, so how we mimicked that in Savage Battle Lords is we added a toughness bonus uh, that represents... Uh, you know, that, that, that absorption layer, that padding that allows you to take those extra hits um, that the, the hard outer shell represented by the armor value might not normally allow you to take. And then because in classic battle lords, um, armor is ablative and you eventually wear it down and it doesn't protect you anymore. How we handle that in savage battle lords, the savage worlds conversion, is that armor has an absorption stat, which is essentially wounds for the armor. And the armor takes the wounds for the character. And once those wounds are exhausted, the armor loses the toughness bonus. And then all you're left with is that hard outer shell, that, that armor stat. Um, and that's, that's how we manage that in um, Savage Battle Lords. Because in Classic Battle Lords, you know, once your absorption is gone, uh, once that's exhausted, you're vulnerable to all kinds of attacks. And so we've mirrored that in Savage Worlds that once once your armor suffers all of the wounds it's capable of taking, you lose that toughness bonus. And then not only do you lose that toughness bonus, all of the wounds from that point forward then go to the character and their wounds. So it's it's similar in Battle Wars where once your armor folds, you're in trouble. You're going to start taking hits and taking damage. Mm -hmm. Now... When it comes to weapons, since this is a big damn deal within Battle Lords, you, even to the point where you guys recently kickstarted a expansion to Classic that made the already exa already pretty big weapon list even bigger, um, how easy or difficult has it been to transfer some of the, transfer some of the feel of those weapons into a system that's not as granular? Um, it's been tough, <laughs> to be honest. Um, a lot of that, a lot of that variety gets compacted down um, because Savage Worlds just isn't designed to, to be that granular. But that's how it's that's how it stays fast. Um, so that's not a flaw in the system. That's just um, 
you know, difficulty we had to deal with in streamlining the weapons um, from classic battle orgs to savage battle orgs. Um, but yeah, that was not an easy task. Of course, I I do see that certain that certain weapons that might be in um set in suede core are not gonna, are not going to be as much of a factor. The big of the big one, of course, being um, kinetic weapons because nobody's going to be using gunpowder in the th in the twenty third century. Yeah, and in um, you still run into archaic powder weapons, is what we what we call them in battle wards, But that was the first thing armor evolved to stop. So if you're using modern armor um, in battle wards, and this will be something that'll be new to, to suede players, um, it's considered heavy armor in suede. Um, so that will be maybe a, a bit of a shock. They'll be like, wait, my, my battle armor is heavy armor? They're like, yeah. Um, you, when you're running around in those state-of-the-art 23rd century heavy armor and mechanized battle armor, um, you can walk through just to hail a gunfire like it's nothing um so that's um you know that's one of the the the, the changes that sort of mirrors the battle or setting um, is that uh, you know they're, they're still going to be effective against body armor but mm. anything bigger than that and yeah they're, they're not going to be great it does make me smile that the partial list of personnel weapons is still fairly extensive <laughs> yes yeah I, I ran out of space, so you only get a partial list. But I, I think that shows people that there's still plenty of variety, despite us having to pare it down. Mm -hmm. um, it, it wouldn't be Battle Lords otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I'm just putting this out there, but if I don't see Omega Weapons in one of the books, I'm going to be very disappointed. They're in the core rules. <laughs> oh, bullet dodge there. Um. Now, when it, when it comes to when it comes to matrices, there's one there's arguably a um, a pre-built setup with the with the way powers work in Savage Worlds. So, would it be fair of me to say that it was a little bit easier to integrate uh, matrices into Savage Worlds' power system? Yeah, that was that was much easier. Um, Savage Worlds does a great job of covering most of your bases in terms of magic powers or psychic powers or, or what have you. Um, there were only a couple um, that we introduced uh, that weren't already covered by the mechanics in Savage Worlds. Really most of what we did with the uh, um, the matrices, the psychic powers that the certain species possess in Battle Wars, um, when we ported those over to the Savage uh, Worlds powers, is we've got custom modifiers. Um, everybody has their particular speciality mm -hmm. in battle lords. Um, your Chitalians are going to be either empathic or, or sonic based attacks, and the Muzakins are energy manipulators, and the, the Zen and the Zazen are, are going to be more biological um, uh, uh, attacks. So they those there are specific power modifiers that apply to the standard savage world's powers for those species and a lot of times they can't use the other ones if you're a particular species you're locked into using that particular modifier um you're not going to see um Mutsakins melting people's minds that's the purview of the chitalians um and you're not going to see chitalians um bending people into uh new pretzel like shapes by messing with their bone structure that's something the zazen do so but you know they, they're still represented by the classic Savage Worlds powers. Um, even with yeah. even with that, would it be fair of me to say that for each for each particular species that uses matrices, you'll have a list of appropriate powers? Yes, and it's it's that's exactly what we have. Um, there is in the matrix section a list of all of the powers that you have access to when you pick your species, if they have access to powers. Um, that's probably a little different than some Savage Worlds players are used to, but certain species get access to powers right off the bat. They start with an arcane background, but that arcane background locks them into a specific set of powers, and you can't you can't get the powers the other guys use. And um, so that yeah, that's exactly how we handle that. Mm -hmm. I did note that there's a fair few um, power modifiers that are that are added. Too many to 
cover in one cover in one interview. But I do think going over the three new powers that are listed is apropos at the very least. And it's they're definitely ones that Battle Lords veterans are gonna be familiar with, but Savage Worlds veterans might not be so. Sure. Um the, the, the three new powers we introduced uh, were one of the few exceptions where there was sort of a gap in the classic suede powers list. And um, uh, the first one is jam, which essentially um, allows you to, to jam your opponent's weapon to make it malfunction. Um, that's one of the themes in Battle Lords is everything is built by the lowest bidder and stuff breaks a lot. And when you get a critical failure with a weapon, you're going to have to roll on the malfunction table and it may just jam or it may blow up in your face, um, which is bad when you're using an anti-tank weapon. Um, so the jam power basically forces them to roll on that malfunction table. Um, there is uh, a phase lock power, which prevents people from teleporting you, uh, displacing you, teleporting um, to your location, we have a lot of species that that t uh, either utilize quantum teleportation or, or dimensional shifting to get to point from point A to point C without going through point B. Um, and so we felt we needed something that was uh, sort of a defense for that. Uh, and the last one is tree fort, which is a, a Muzakin power, an energy controller power, and it's basically a portable hole. Uh, you know, it's it's a an interdimensional closet, so the uh, the Muzakin can you know open it up, grab their stuff, close it back up. Um, you know, it's it's the Battle Lords equivalent of a, of a portable hole, essentially. Now, one thing I've always talked about games having a extra effort system, and of course, Savage Worlds has that with the Bennies. I'm curious if the use of bennies is identical to how to how it would be in um, in Savage Worlds Core, or if there's some tweaks or even some new uses for bennies in um, Savage Battle Lords. Yeah, the the Benny system works great. That's something that we didn't feel we needed to tweak. I mean, part of bringing Savage Worlds or Battle Lords into Savage Worlds is you're, you're modeling the setting and once the setting is modeled, you know, I try not to tweak anything that doesn't need tweak. So uh, much like the advancement system is essentially untouched. The bennies work the same. Now there's, there's new edges um, where you can trigger them with a Benny. Um, so, um, you know, there, there, there are some new things you can do with them if you have the proper edges, but essentially the, the, the way they function is unchanged. And I, I think people will be spending them a lot in battle lords to get those damage re re rolls. Something else I'm curious about if you if you if you're going to be in integrating it or expanding upon to give it a more battle lords flavor is things is things like interludes. Um, not really. I, again, I think that's something that um, Savage Worlds does fine. Now, in the Alliance setting guide, we have an entire chapter on running short-term campaigns, long-term campaigns, um, running Battle Lords uh, adventures and scenarios. But I really think, you know, when you get to the nitty-gritty of how you want to, you know, do I do I need a dynamic task here or do I need an interlude here? I think that's a GM call. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's you know, how, how they want to run their campaign is or their game is up to them. So, mm -hmm. um, like I said, we give advice on, on campaigns and campaign planning and uh, tips for running a, a Battle Lords esque game, but that's something that we didn't we, we haven't really messed with. All right, I can I can certainly get behind that. Now, one of the uh, one of the other um, one of the other factors that I w that I am a bit curious of, am a bit curious about is in regards to during combat. Um, how how much is there going is cover going to be working the same way or is um is a co is cover in compared to Savage Worlds core going to be working a bit different? Uh, it essentially works the same way mm -hmm. um, with two tweaks. 
Um, one, we have an expanded list of cover in the Carnage Companion because there are a lot of materials in the Battle Lords universe that are much tougher than the um, default materials listed uh, in the Savage Worlds cover table. Mm -hmm. um, flex steel and, and, and spray crete and things like that. Um, and the second is certain weapons like pulse weapons uh, go through cover like a hot knife through butter. And they get a bonus. They, they basically ignore a certain amount of cover bonus because they're just going to shoot right through it. Um, so, um, but other than that, cover works identically. And I just realized that, it, that there were a couple of things I forgot to ask about regarding matrix use. Mm -hmm. um, that being matrix manipulation and backlash. Yeah, um, in matrix manipulation um, is essentially, in Savage Worlds players will know it as, as adding generic power modifiers. Um, we've expanded the list, or, or adding power modifiers, we've expanded that list of power modifiers. There's a lot more things you can do to powers and battle wards in terms of tweaking their output and duration and range and changing blast template size. Um, and that, that gets ported over from classic battle wards. Um, Matrix manipulators, people who have powers, really have a lot of control over tweaking them. Um, the catch is when they overextend themselves, um, tweaking a power and it fails, they suffer backlash. And that, that's also been ported over to uh, Savage Battle Lords, is when if, if you're trying to manipulate a power beyond the, the default specifications, let us say, um, and you mess it up, you're going to suffer backlash. Uh, and it, it may put your, your matrix controller, your, your power user down for a little bit. Which def definitely, makes, definitely makes sense. There's still the whole thing of you have phenomenal cosmic power, but, um, that po but um, misfires, can still ha misfires can happen just as much with mental weaponry as it can with physical weaponry. Yeah, and that's one of the themes of Battle Wars is... You know, stuff goes wrong all the time. <laughs> well, just just remember, it is never just a milk run. That's right. There's always a catch. <laughs> and with that kind of thing in mind, you mentioned th you mentioned that you're splitting it into three books, as I as I recall. Correct. Now, one of the big so as I understand it, it's a you have a core set, the Carnage Companion, which is basically ed, can be considered advanced battle lords, if you'll forgive if you'll forgive the analogy, and what you're tentatively calling the Alliance campaign setting. Yeah, it's like a setting guide. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah. Now, Within the within those first two books, would it be fair of me to assume that that's where the bulk of the boots on the ground styles of engagement are going to be? The ship based stuff would would likely be in the alliance book. Correct. Yeah. The your, your, the spacecraft are in in the setting guide. Um, the vehicles are in the Carnage Companion. And then when I say vehicles, that also includes Ultra Armor, which are our walking tanks or walking crawling tanks. Um, uh, those are in vehicles as well. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be um, uh, in in the first two books, vehicles and and your your infantry gear and personnel mm -hmm. stuff. Now, when it came to the different species, there were a, there were a bunch of different species in the Battle Lords core books. So I'm curious which one of those were easier and which one of those were more difficult to port over. Um. That's a good question. Which one was easiest and which one was most difficult? Um, the the most difficult would be would probably be the uh, the the gen humans and the humans. Um, most of the species you pick in battle orgs are above and beyond what anything your humans can do in terms of physical uh, and mental capability. So we had to come up with a way to put humans and gen humans on the same level. So 
people aren't avoiding them. And we went to great lengths to try and get them all as balanced as possible. I got a big spreadsheet. Um, and we argued and argued about this should be worth two points. No, this should be worth four points um, with the play testers to really get it hammered out um, and balanced. But those were the, um, the most difficult. Um, and gen humans, you've got that added complexity of uh, uh, your powers are random. You know, depending on your heritage. So you're rolling on a table to get your powers. And a lot of our play testers are big fans of maintaining that balance. That's what they like about Savage Worlds. Um, uh, you know, which it kind of cracks me up that you've got rifts in Savage Worlds, but they didn't want the, the, the problem where, well, I'm playing a vagabond over here and that guy's playing a glitter boy in rifts and we are totally not equal. <laughs> um, so that that was you know something that they wanted to make sure that even though it's a random generation of that character's capabilities, um, that no matter what you get, you're still balanced. Mm -hmm. um, the easiest characters or species to do were probably you know things like the ram pythons. Big and dumb, big and dumb is easy. Uh, it, you know that's pretty easy to model in in, in Savage Worlds. Yeah, and truth be told, uh, I've I've mentioned this elsewhere, but set but. Um... Rifts getting the Savage Worlds treatment made me laugh for several different reasons, even though it is a natural fit. It's yeah, just that it... um, the OCCs that that um, Rifts has created over the years were created by someone who had no idea how to balance things, or even how to edit things for that matter. <laughs> yeah, I, I complain about um, um, balancing the species in... Um, uh, in Savage Battle Wars, um, I would not want to have been the guy who was in charge of <laughs> trying to get a Glitter Boy <laughs> to balance with <laughs> like a juicer. Uh, but, uh, you know, they did it uh, in uh, in Rifts for Savage Worlds. But, yeah, that, um, yeah, that, that, that would have been a tough job. Well, I'd probably have to ask them, okay, how, how deep is the dent in the wall? <laughs> what dent? What? As far as what dent in the wall? The dent that the the dent where somebody was banging their heads in trying to balance this. Just saying, there's either that or a punching bag that got a lot of use at the office. I could imagine. Yeah, uh, when you, when your characters in in that game are, you know, what are you playing? You know, I'm a walking tank. What are you playing? I'm a speed junkie. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, have fun balancing that. I know, I know that certain designers have argued that balance isn't necessary for a for a role playing game. Mm -hmm. um, I think, that, which personally, I think is a table to table thing, not something that should be applied in general. Especially since I've seen what I've seen what happens when that argument reaches its natural end, where you have where you have certain archetypes that are party members all to themselves. Um, the D and D example I always bring up is Codzilla, which is shorthand for cleric or druid. Because hmm. somebody who knows what they're doing with either of those classes or both of them, it basically turns the game into easy mode. That's that's our uh, that's, yeah, Keith, uh, one of one of our our, our guys here. Um, yeah, he's, he's he's infamous for his Dungeons and Dragons clerics. I hope to God he didn't try and pull off pun pun. I'm not familiar with that one. That was an experiment on the old Wizards forums to try and make the most broken-ass build possible, which involved a Cobalt Invoker that could get any level in any class with no <laughs> limits. No, I don't think he had anything to do with that one, but that wouldn't surprise me. That'd be right up his alley. Uh, his, his favorite was the Barbarian Cleric. Yes, the half bar the half, half orc orc. Barbarian Cleric. Now I can use all my cleric powers to make myself really strong, and because I've got a couple levels in Barbarian, I can close the distance faster, and with this magic item, which makes me even stronger, and on and on and on and on. <laughs> and I can use the giant great big axe. Yes. Yeah. My DM hates me for the fact that I kept using um, paladin-sorcerer hybrids, or um, palerers, as I, as I call them. Because both of because both of them cast with charisma, so it's just, hey, I'm getting more sm I'm getting more smites than I know what to do with. I'll have to try that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and 
back in the day there was the infamous build where some some where somebody said um, that magic missile is a useless spell, and I, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna merc I'm gonna make this into a very useful spell by casting all the missiles. <laughs> just max just a bunch of meta magic feats so I'm cast so in one turn I'm use I'm using a hundred and twenty eight D fours worth of magic missile. Like yeah, the the, the the spell equivalent of death by kobolds. I mean yeah, it's only about it's only um, it's only rolling a bunch of call trots, but nobody's gonna try and tur nobody's gonna try and turn the um t um roll the dice off the table in that regard because everybody's afraid of what's gonna happen with um d fours on the floor. Yeah, you'd want a dice trick for that. No, I've I've used I used that one I used that once to get people from to stop stealing and stealing stuff from the kitchen late at night. Worked out <laughs> pretty well. I only had to use that once, but even even though you have three books, would it be? I think it'd be fair of me to to say that this is that um, as long as somebody has just the core rulebook for Suede, they're more or less covered. They wouldn't they wouldn't need anything more than that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's part of the um, licensing. In uh, that, that Pinnacle does on these games is we're we're not allowed to use anything beyond the core rules to design the system. Um, and that's all you need to play it. Which is a, which is a fair a fair move to make. Um. Now, when it comes to you mentioned you mentioned um. Set, you mentioned setting up advice for short and long term campaigns, and given how that whole rank system works, um, I could see certain types of long term campaigns being a little bit trickier, given the pulp nature of Savage Worlds. So, how do you how do you usually advise it to do long term campaigns with with um, Savage Worlds and with Savage Battle Lords? Um, it's really mapping them out um, you, uh, you know, sort of bullet point format. Um, you map out your your short term campaign goals and then really um, what's going to be unique to Savage Battle Lords is it's going to be the progression of what you can afford equipment wise for most of your occupations, whether you're a mercenary or a pirate um, or a spy uh, or an espionage agent. Um, as the campaign progressive progresses, not only will your um, experience your, your level advance, but it all, you'll probably be getting better gear as you go. Um, the exception to that rule are the military campaigns where you get what they give you. Um, and if you're lucky, um, they'll give you equipment tailored to the mission, which um, as you've hinted at, will always be the wrong equipment for that particular mission, but hey, at least they're trying. Um, but uh, yeah, in, in, if you're playing a soldier, you know, you, you get what equipment uh, the higher ups deem to give you. Um, and so that's a little easier to, con to control in terms of uh, where that's going. Yeah. Now, given how a playing card deck is, is, is essential to the, to the Savage Worlds experience, um, I did in the preview you had sent me. It did. It did give the implication that one of the add-ons you guys are considering is things like chips for Benny's and your and a um poke and a poker deck. Um, in that in that regard, are are you cust are you um customizing the suits for that deck so that it fits the theme? Um, if, if I can light a fire under my art director, um, the, the suits will essentially be the same. Um, uh, but the, the faces, the, the face value of the cards will be specific species. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, uh, scissor acts are almost always female. So they'll be on the Queens for all four suits. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, Orion's are wild and unpredictable, so they're going to be on the Jokers. Um, but other than that, it's still going to be your your four basic suits yeah. uh, and your Jokers. Now, what are you shooting for as far as a page count for each? 
uh, for each of the each of the books that you guys have planned? Um, barring additions of any additional content, um, I can tell you that uh, the core rules are 208 pages. Uh, the Carnage Companion is 158 pages, uh, and the setting guide uh, is going to be about. Um, I don't think I have all the pages in here, so about 128-ish, give or take. All right, all right. That I can certainly go with that. And when are you shooting to go live with it? Um, late uh, spring of this year, so probably uh, early to mid-April, if, if all goes well. Uh, right now, we, we're putting all our effort into getting fully armored, the gear manual for classic Battle Lords out the door so we can have it in time for convention season. Mm -hmm. uh, but once that's wrapped up, uh, we'll get working on that Kickstarter. The Kickstarter is mostly done except for the artwork. So it's it's once we get the artwork and the video in there, we pretty much just have to press go. Is that why you said light a fire under under your <laughs> artwork guy? Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely overworked. He's uh, he's uh, he's doing work for fully armored he's uh you know supposed to do uh the kickstarter artwork he's supposed to be working on a, a battle lords playing card deck uh yeah he's uh yeah he he's definitely overworked is this why they keep saying that you're the one who ends up cracking the whip yeah it's 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 my job to <laughs> to, to bug him on a daily basis which i can really I was going to say, really, Tony bugs all of us. It's it's kind of his thing. He, yeah, the, the only difference is when I bug Kurt and Dave, they, they move. <laughs> um, although it, although given given that, has has anyone considered sending um sending material to Dave in mirror writing or something? Not yet, uh, I'm, I'm, though uh, some of it, uh, like I'll specifically tell him ahead of time, I'm like, in very end. And so I immediately get three or four things back. This needs to be this way. And I'm like, I said, ignore the pixel shifts. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I forgot. I just put them all in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something he can't get away from, which is, which is kind of funny, because you know that's what we want the last pass for. But uh, it uh, definitely uh, helps out. I feel sorry for whoever makes his birthday cake. Well, that might catch something on fire, right, Dave? Ow. <laughs> now, now I now I feel compelled to order him a cake. And instead of having it rectangular, having it shifted slightly. <laughs> Tony is the one, if I recall correctly, that posted a thing of all the different um, OCD nightmare scenarios, like yes. the pattern that's got this nice white tile floor with all these little white tiles and little black tiles making a nice little border with one white tile in the middle of the black border and one black tile in the middle of the white empty space. <laughs> He also yeah. sent the uh, OCD quiz where they have one little thing off on every single thing, and I'm like, so where's the hard ones? <laughs> yeah, I um, at one of at one of my jobs, one of the uh, programmers was ridiculously OCD, even by programmer standards, and I would mercilessly give him crap for it. Like I'd I'd write report I'd write reports where I had the lettering, um, just a f just a few. A, f a few sp a few um, pixels too close to each other, so some of the letters look like they're blending in when they really shouldn't. Don't sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I I think Dave might think we're doing that when we send him stuff to review that has dashes instead of m dashes in it. So he might yes. be cussing me out when that's going on. So yeah, unfortunately they they all look the same to me, which doesn't help. But Dave will be like, "No, that's an in dash. No, that's a hyphen. No, that's an m dash." I was like, "Oh, they all just look like here. lines to me." This one needs to be a minus sign. That one needs to be an m dash. They're the same. No, they're not. No, they're not. Do you do this? Do you do this when you have to deal with doctor's handwriting, Dave? No, I don't have to look at it. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> Kurt has to deal with that. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying no I'm just saying doc 
without with all the jokes that people have made over the years about doctor's handwriting being illegible, I could see you just blowing a gasket looking at a doctor's clipboard. I, I'm a nurse, and even I do that when I try to read their decipher their writing, especially the surgeons. You would think somebody with such great manual dexterity could actually write his name readable or write you know something legible on a on a line. It doesn't happen. I you I usually chalk it up to they probably were they probably were in Catholic school. You Smack know the whole, one too many times with the ruler. Yeah. Smack a bunch of times, and then the ru then the nun wonders why you're three years behind on penmanship. <laughs> uh, now, one one other thing that has be that has been oh that has made the ra made the rounds, and I and I saw some hintings of this in the preview. Are you guys planning on doing uh, on doing actual plays in the run in the run up? to the Kickstarter and during its um, duration? Yes. Um, there is one already in the planning stage. Um, that's going to be run um, by Carrie Smith. Uh, she's doing an actual, uh, a Battle Wars actual play for us. Um, there is a uh, another one potentially uh, that may be in the works. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, yeah, it, uh, Carrie Smith is uh, she. Her, she's on Twitter. Uh, she just finished running a. Uh, it's uh, Carrie with an I. Carrie Smith 2012 um, is her Twitter, uh, and she um, just finished running a Deadlands uh, Savage Worlds campaign, and it was incredible. And when I was watching it, uh, you know, she'd have one set of actors on for 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 one game. And then a lot of them would get killed off. And in the next game, she'd have another set of actors and a lot of them would get killed off. And by the end of the campaign, the surviving actors from the different episodes, their story arcs had come together. And the amount of planning she did on that uh, was, was amazing. So, and I knew she liked uh, Savage Worlds and we asked her if she could run an actual play. So I think she said she's gonna do a two-parter. Um, but I just knew when she was killing off the player characters, I was like, there's a Battle Lords game master if I ever saw one. <laughs> yeah. Be even, be even worse if there was a death counter graphic on that actual play. <laughs> um, yeah. Either a death counter or a, um, or some sort of listing, some sort of cause of death style listing. You know, what, you know, the, um, like like the ridiculous Darwin Award level obituary. Those happen pretty often in a game of Battle Wars. Uh, Kurt, what's the what's the weirdest? I'm sure we've had some at Gen Con. Or, or, or Dave, do you remember any horrific deaths for sure. Carrie? Sure, I've got one. So, uh, spoiler um, for those who play our Gen Con scenarios, this, the, you may want to fast forward past this if you don't want a spoiler about how one of these events goes. All right. Five, four. There we go. All right. So one of the events we call Train to Hades. It's mm -hmm. a train break. Uh, you have a syndicate uh, boss who has been sent off to the supermax on a really hazardous hell world, mm -hmm. and your team has been hired to rescue him. Except some of your team has been encouraged by the second in command, who said, "You know, if he doesn't come back, I'm in charge, and I can make it worth your while." This encourages some intra-party discussions of the large caliber kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was running this game, and the team is, is uh, doing really well. They've gotten to the, uh, successfully gotten onto the train. They've taken care of the guards. They're running around. Uh, they've uh, found the uh, target, and they open up the case. His head rolls out. They're like, oh, crap. They scoop it up in a hat box to grab his head so they can preserve him alive, and that's when the traitors start firing. <laughs> and that's when the other bad guys start showing up. So this nasty, massive ram python on steroids, kind of Bane-like, if you want to think of it that way, comes running in, puts down their python hard. <laughs> things go left, things go right, things go south, and they keep going further south. Mm -hmm. And... Then everybody's trying to escape. Well, the traders are trying to throw, uh, you know, basically get away and go uh, by explaining that things just went wrong and they have to escape now. And so they're trying to get out. 
Well, the net result is um, there's a running firefight up to the roof of the thing. The last two survivors are the Fentari who, ironically enough, it was the Fentari betraying everybody. Uh, and uh, one of the other characters get up there and um, one of the characters jumps to try to get at this guy, misses it, gets sucked into the engine of the um, shuttle that's coming in. It goes into the ground. Everyone on the train goes into the acid lake and dies. <laughs> they all die. And the python who got shot managed to get back up but was struggling to try to crawl his way after this Ventari. Here's the explosion of the shuttle and knows he's he successfully won. His honor is intact and he smiles as he falls into the liquid acid. <laughs> yeah, it was gruesome. Yep. They all died. Rocks fall, yeah. everyone dies. Yeah, that was one of yeah, the one of the few games where we've had TPKs. <laughs> total, <laughs> total party kills. <laughs> Like we wiped the entire thing, and they had a blast. They were yeah, all yeah. That was the best. They, they were all cheering like that was so much fun. Yeah, they were not. They were not annoyed at all. They thought it was hilarious. They thought it was hilarious. <laughs> yep. Now, getting back on the rails for a moment, a lot of people inevitably create custom content for their games. In fact, this is something I always, I always encourage because help Gygax House wrote his own game, and I'm curious if you guys have are planning on putting a conversion guide in one of the books. You know, some, a bit of guidelines to help, to help help with with certain things that aren't in the core books that somebody may have may have may have homebrewed when it comes to weapons, armor, what have you. So, we do have uh so okay, older than dirt guy. Um, I've been playing since the original original travelers, like way back with little black booklets. Mm -hmm. One of the things that they came out with, uh, GDW came out with uh, think something called Striker. They also came out with something called High Guard. Both of those have what they call design sequences that let you custom build all kinds of cool stuff. Um, High Guard spaceships and um, Striker lets you really build out all kinds of vehicles. And by all kinds, I mean anything that would make sense in a science fiction kind of a setting. And so we... You know, we have talked about the idea of releasing um, design sequences for various weapons and armor so that people could custom build new things to you know, create niche things that would fill a particular need or whatever. Um, in terms of where it would fit in things, though, I think the, the, the catch is we've got, we've got the one book we're trying to get out right now, which is fully armored. We've got three more right behind it that I'm already in editing on. Um, found another one of those one pixel off things, Kurt. Just kidding. Uh, and uh, so we've just got a lot of we've got a very chock full schedule of um, of releases. So we also have some coming up um, PDF work to do. So we've got uh, a little vehicle supplement coming under the Warmongers tag, I think it is. Um, we have a Hal's book coming. Um, I'm missing something, Tony. We got like two or three beyond that. What else do we have? More spaceships. Uh, spaceships, uh, metals, and um, Mega Corps. Yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of pots in the fire, so to speak. Um, so I, yeah, I don't think we've got anything in the near term. Um, one of my hopes was, and, and, and the way I designed Savage Battle Lords, and, and again, sort of how we build it is, is, is futuristic armored infantry combat, is that if people like that and they want to pull the armor and weapons out and use them in their own campaigns. Um, it's 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 super easy to drop them into any existing Savage Worlds um, game, um, so we're we're hoping that people like it. You know, you, even if you're you're not sure about the setting, um, the ability to to play that um, futuristic armor uh, and, and weapons uh, system will be appealing. Well, and I know one thing. Dave and Tony didn't kind of mention, but they do have these massive spreadsheets. And in that spreadsheet, for the most part, like the armor, Tony's assigned values to it, basically kind of like generic values. And it sets the price and cost and all that kind of stuff on it. 
So uh, we haven't really talked yet about, you know, at some point releasing that to, to you know, let people add things and, and go, okay, this is what it should cost. And if it's going to do this, this is how much it's going to cost if you're going to add it to it. Because um, it's still kind of wonky, I want to say. Uh, some of it's kind of, you know, uh, wave a hand and go, okay, I'm going to just add this because it seems too overpowered. So we have it kind of built, but uh, it's not where we would want it to as far as a um, flexibility and control standpoint to make things balanced yeah it, it's it, there's a lot of we've just we've played this game so much we, we can tell pretty quickly if something's just not gonna line up power wise and is either over or underpowered um and that's that's the catch it, it's we've tried to keep consistent with prior editions and that carries with it a certain amount of trickiness in terms of getting things to stick within the within the general themes that have previously been laid out. Yeah, everything on the back end. Yeah, we have enormous spreadsheets, um, and everything on the back end. They're not really not really Kurt's hinted. They're not really suitable for front end for for end users. But we design everything on the back end with those spreadsheets. And then, as Dave said, there's an at the last step in that is there's an intuitive do we need to tweak this for cost, for balance, for, for, for playability? Um, and that's, that's not really taken account in the spreadsheet. That's something that just comes from, you know, our experience. So just to give you an idea of what massive means, we're talking for weapons, you know, almost a, a, a thousand rows and the, the spreadsheet goes all the way up to CL. That's double letters CL. <laughs> so there's a lot of columns. Mm-hmm. So it's complicated. There's an, there's an understatement. But with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you guys for taking the time out of your schedule to come up to the temple and enjoy the madness that happens around here. And hopefully I don't get any threatening let threatening letters from, from Dave from Dave if if I um, am one pixel off on the presentation. No, but you might get some angry letters from GURPS fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh please! I get angry letters from GURPS fans all the time. But well, we appreciate you having us on. Mm -hmm. Thank and you for having us. Anytime you guys see fit to return to the temple, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!